AppGyver is a fantastic no-code tool to build web and mobile apps. But what do you do for the backend? Where do you store the data? How do you authenticate users? There's all of these other questions. And as a non-technical person, it's really hard to figure out what tools to use. So I'm gonna help you answer that question and I'm gonna be talking about Firebase specifically. So how do you evaluate whether Firebase is the right tool for you to use in combination with AppGyver to build your killer web or mobile app? I'm William Glass. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ostrich and obviously host of Silicon Alley. I've built multiple no-code apps using AppGyver and other tools including Firebase. Today, I'm gonna to share the 12 things that you need to know before building with Firebase. I'm gonna cover nine positives, yeah, nine, and then three negatives um, or cons to using Firebase. I'm gonna cover the nine pros to using Firebase as your backend. The first one is that it's quick to set up. The API implementation is pretty straightforward and luckily, AppGyver has documentation written that'll walk you exactly through how to integrate Firebase and AppGyver. There's also video tutorials that you can watch. So it's super easy to set up, which is the first pro. The second pro is authentication. What I mean by authentication is the ability to create user accounts and log people back in and store passwords and things like that. And there's a lot of security rules and things that you've got to think about when implementing authentication and Firebase makes it super simple. There's also great documentation on how to set this up in particular and use a Firebase authentication in your AppGyver app. The third pro to using Firebase as your backend is that it's easy to limit access to certain data sets. What I mean by that is, say you want to have a, a couple different user types. It could be an admin, it could be a regular user, it could be a premium user. Well, through the Firebase authentication, you can actually make it where folks can see information but not interact with it. And this will be all done on the back end. You can also limit what they can see, what they have access to, making sure that people can't write data or overwrite data that they shouldn't. And you can do that based on user roles. So Firebase through the aut authentication plus with their security rules makes it super, super easy to uh, create these different types of user roles and limit and protect data in the way that you need it to be protected based on your use case. The fourth pro to using Firebase ties directly into the last one, strong security. It's a Google product. Google is pretty darn good at what they do. They've been doing it for a long time. The security that's around Firebase is fantastic. One of the limitations with using AppGyver is that it exposes your API key. But because of the fact that you have authentication built into Firebase, you can protect the ability for people to access your data. So they might be able to know your, your API key, but they won't be able to access it without proper authentication. And that's the beauty of Firebase versus Airtable, for example. And so I talked a little bit about that in the Airtable video as a limitation. Firebase has the ability to protect the data even though the API key is gonna still be visible just because of the way that AppGyver works. The fifth benefit to using Firebase is that it's easy to scale. It is a Google product and is meant to handle a large load. There are actual developers that will code apps and they'll build out the front end, they'll code it themselves and then use Firebase as a back end because of the ability to scale and the robustness of the product. So that is a huge benefit and it's super, super easy to increase the load and it can handle a high load because it is a Google product and it's built pretty well. So if you go super crazy global and you're the next Facebook, you will have scaling problems, but you will have scaling problems no matter what you use. So <laughs> that, is, uh, that is one thing to think about, but overall Firebase is meant to scale. The sixth benefit is that you can create robust applications. What I mean by that is there's so many different tools within Firebase, whether it's Firebase functions or the ability to use push notifications, authentication, Firestore, real-time database. There's all these different things that you can use. It can honestly be almost overwhelming, but you can create a really robust application using Firebase as your backend. And it's, it's a great tool to use from that respect. I will get into a con just Briefly, if you were a true no-code developer, you still will not probably be able to access a lot of that stuff because it's not truly meant for folks that have no coding knowledge whatsoever. So that is one thing to think about and I'm gonna touch on that a little bit more in the cons, but you can build really robust applications 
if you bring in a developer that, especially if they're familiar with Firebase, they'll be able to build really cool, robust apps that do creative things through Firebase. The seventh pro are the integrations that you can do with Firebase. So Firebase is super flexible, so you can integrate many other applications into it, whether it's using tools like Zapier, um, or if you do know how to code, you can use some of the Firebase functions to create automations and create those integrations. So there's a lot of integrations that you can do with Firebase. It's been around for a long time. It's a Google product. It already is integrated in a lot of ways with certain Google applications, which is awesome, which I'll touch on in just a moment. That's the benefit is that you can do a lot of integrations, especially if you have a little bit of coding knowledge. The eighth benefit, as I mentioned previously, there's integrations that already exist between Google products. So you already have analytics. And if you're pushing an app to the Android store, you're gonna have access to that because Google Play is the Android store. So that is the other benefit is that you get pretty good analytics right out of the box using Firebase. This is not something you're gonna get with a lot of other tools, but you do get it with Firebase. There is a little bit of setup that you might need to do, such as tying in your Google Analytics account with Firebase, but that stuff's pretty straightforward and you'll get some, again, robust analytics that you won't necessarily get with other backend tools. Number nine on the pros, it is free to use. Again, once you hit certain metrics, you'll start having to pay, but pretty much everything that you need will be free. And once you get into a paying tier, you're probably gonna be paying pennies, maybe dollars a month based on your actual usage. So that's the other benefit is that it'll scale up and down based on your actual usage. So if you're not getting a ton of traffic or you're not really using it, it's not gonna cost you any money. If you are, that is awesome because that means that your app is having a lot of success and doing what you want it to do and you'll start paying, but it'll scale up slowly. It's a pretty low barrier to entry. It's free for the most part. And then also once you do get into a paying tier, it's very small increments as it goes up. So that's the other benefit is that it is essentially free to use. Now let's get into the three cons of using Firebase as your backend. The first is that if you are not technical, it's gonna be kind of hard to navigate at first. The challenge is gonna be that it's still hard to navigate. If you're looking at Firebase documentation, it is written for engineers. And if you're not an engineer or you're not technical, you might get lost. I know I did, it took me a long time. Eventually I started to figure out the things that I needed to pay attention to and what I needed to ignore. There's robust documentation, but again, it's not written for laymen. Whereas the AppGyver documentation is written for people that don't know how to code necessarily. So that is something to be aware of and be cognizant of. The second limitation is going to be in accessing all of the cool features, you do need to have some level of coding expertise. Now to use just a basic database, to do authentication, use analytics, you don't. But if you want to do any other things such as push notifications, or you want to use the Firebase functions to automate certain triggers, that stuff you do need to have some level of coding knowledge. So you're gonna be able to get value out of Firebase, but to really maximize the power of it, you do need to have some coding skills. So that is a con. If you're building a complex, robust application, you're probably gonna have a hard time building it with all of the current tools out there in the marketplace in the no code space anyway. But if you have a developer or an engineer that can give you a little bit of time or that you can bring on board, they'll be able to help solve this. But if it's just you as a no code person, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of everything Firebase has to offer. So be aware of that. The third con is that relative to an Airtable, it's not as easy to use as a content management system. And what I mean by that is if you're familiar with websites such as WordPress, WordPress acts as a content management system where you can go in there, create posts, it'll post it or a blog post, create a new page, all that stuff. It manages the images, the text, all the things that you wanna create in a website and you just quickly publish it. I would say that Airtable is better for that in the current state when you combine it with AppGyver than Firebase is. Firebase, you can do that, but it's not quite as simple. So that is one thing to be aware of. As a pure content management system, so sending information to users, not the greatest. You can do it, but it's not as straightforward. So those are the nine things that I really like about Firebase and then the three things to be aware of before you choose to build Firebase and AppGyver and combine them together. My recommendation is that you use authentication for sure from Firebase. It just makes too much sense. And if you're storing sensitive user data, information, private stuff, Firebase is gonna be your go-to database for that. 
it might make sense for you to use a combination of Firebase and Airtable. So for example, if you have information that doesn't change, that users can interact with, but it doesn't change, that might be something good to put on Airtable. But if you're storing personal information about a user, whether it's email, name, things like that, you're probably gonna wanna keep that on Firebase. So my recommendation is that you definitely use Firebase for authentication, the analytics will be helpful, and as a database to store personal information, you're gonna to wanna to use that. But if you don't know how to code, you're definitely gonna to wanna to combine Airtable and Firebase as your backend when you're building with HapGyver. Happy to answer any other questions that you have. Drop them in the comments if you've got a specific app that you're working on. I'd love to just know in general, and that way other people can support it as well. So as you build, drop information down below and we can test it and give feedback and all that kind of stuff. But go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button if you found value. And if you're interested in looking at the Airtable video, go watch that one where I talk about Airtable and the pros and cons of using that with AppGyver. Again, I'm William Glass, CEO and co-founder of Ostrich and your host of Silicon Alley. The company that I'm building is Ostrich and we are helping people achieve their financial goals through our mobile app that puts people in social financial challenges that provide a pathway structure and accountability for them to their goals. It's fun, it's gamified, and we're not linking to bank accounts nor providing financial services, so it's easy to use, free. So I encourage you to download that on the app stores as well. And I appreciate you watching. Have a wonderful day and good luck building. Are you interested in growing and scaling your business? Welcome to the Silicon Alley podcast, where you'll hear from entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and top performers on what it truly takes to grow and scale a business. You'll walk away with actionable insights you can apply in your own business and life.